Hello everybody and thank you for joining us for this session of the Privacy Rules Meet the Member podcast. We are pleased to welcome Jose Leitao from MDME Lawyers, that is a leading full-service law firm from Macau, in order to know a bit more about him, about his firm, and about the data privacy framework in Macau. So, hello, Jose. Hello. It's a great pleasure for me to be, to be here speaking today to all the members of Privacy Rules. It's a great honor for us here at MDME to join this exclusive membership. I hope I'll, I'll have the opportunity to meet each of you in person in the, in the upcoming events and to have meaningful discussions about this area of law and about how we can grow our respective markets. But for today, for this Meet, meet the Member podcast, I thought I'd perhaps field a few preliminary questions and general questions about the data privacy regime here in Macau and, um, and, uh, and hopefully have a chance to discuss these later on at, the, at greater length with, uh, with all of you. Definitely. Thank you very much, Jose. And it's a pleasure for us. And, uh, and yes, as you mentioned, we are going to have uh, um, a calendar full of events next year, starting from uh, Beijing uh, and then moving to Helsinki and Tokyo for, for sure. So definitely that will be all good occasions for meeting. And uh, I would like immediately to start discussing a bit about uh, you, your firm and, uh, and your country. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to know a bit more about your background and uh, MDME and what you do um, in relation also to, to data privacy. Well, as you mentioned, MDME is a full service law firm. We've been operating here in, in the Macau Special Administrative Region of the People's Republic of China for more than 10 years now. And while we are a full service law firm, we are one of the few firms, if not the only here in Macau, that truly specializes in practice areas and sectors with each of our partners uh, working a particular field. I myself, my, uh, my, my background is uh, a bit of a mixed bag. I work in, uh, in different areas ranging from construction to, uh, to banking law. But over the past few years, my, uh, my work has been focusing more on the regulatory aspect and with particular focus on data privacy, which is a growing trend, not only in Macau, but the world over. And, uh, and my work has been basically focused on assisting local and international clients with the compliance requirements of local data privacy laws and helping them adjust their, their data flows to meet these requirements. Jose, thank you. And, and speaking about uh, uh, the requirements and, uh, and the regimes, I would like to immediately start asking you uh, we, if you can provide us with a little overview on the data protection regime there in Macau. Happy to. Our, our local data, data privacy regime dates back to, to 2005, which means that in a, in a fast-paced market and area, and in an area that is increasingly leveraged in, in technical means and technical support, it's already, by all accounts, a relatively old law. Uh, the law in play currently here in Macau is Law 8-2005, and it, uh, it mirrors quite closely the old legislation, the pre-GDPR legislation in Portugal, because Macau was, uh, was, as you may know, a territory of Portugal up to 1999. In fact, we are celebrating the 20 years of the handover of the territory uh, of Macau back to China. But this law was uh, enacted in 2005 and, and has remained in effect ever since. In, in, in general terms, the law takes a, a take, takes a relatively wide view of what constitutes personal data. It's a, it's a view that will be familiar to, to, to most of you, namely that uh, it's any piece of data which by itself or in combination with others allows for the identification of individual physical persons. There are subsets of data that are treated more carefully namely sensitive data that pertaining to philosophical, religious, uh, uh, genetic health and, uh, and sexual preferences, also data regarding credit worthiness and, uh, and solvability. And, uh, and this data is, of course, subject to conditions of collection, treatment and transfer, which I would uh, elaborate ever so briefly now. Regarding the collection, it, the, it has to be legitimate, which means that it has to be collected for specified purposes, for purposes which are legitimate, ideally with the consent of the data subject, but not necessarily. 
as for the as for the treatment the treatment has to be made for very specified purposes and cannot go beyond those purposes in this respect while there is no legal uh, definition of what are legitimate purposes the macau regulator the macau the uh, data protection office we'll call it mdpo going forward they uh, they tend to uh, apply the interpretations and the and the work product of the article 29 working group which means that all of these definitions tend to hew very closely to the definitions elaborated upon by that group one of the key features of uh, of our law here and one that perhaps has the most material relevance to uh, to uh, to clients is the fact that uh, transfer of data and in general terms notification is subject to authorization from the regulator from the MDPO um this authorization is based on the assessment of the suitability of the target jurisdiction and there is currently no white list of jurisdictions which are pre-approved by the regulator for transfer that being said there are exceptions to this rule data can be transferred regardless of the suitability of the target uh, of the target jurisdiction under certain circumstances one of those circumstances is of course unequivocal consent meaning consent that is granted for the specific purpose of the transfer and in and uh, and others such as the necessity of the transfer of data for the completion of a contract for the defense of uh, of vital rights of the data subject or for the pursuit of legitimate legal claims by the data processor in these cases the tra- the, the the collection treatment and transfer of the personal data is subject to a notification regime it's made through a standardized form that is submitted to the uh, to the regulator which is then processed and lodged in a public access file which can be consulted online this is uh, this is the main feature mostly because uh, uh, failure to do so entails certain penalties these penalties range from administrative fines to potentially prison sentences although this is not the norm but also accessory fines such as the prohibition of collection and treatment of data for a for a predetermined period of time which is of course in these days catastrophic for any for any economic uh, uh, operator acting in the region and also the publication of the sanctions which from a reputational perspective is something clearly to be avoided so uh, i would say that out of the main features that currently would uh, would set our law apart from uh, from existing legislation is this relatively tight requirement of notification there are exemptions to the, to the need of uh, of of a notification but by and large they do not cover transfer and this is particularly important when you consider the economic background of macau macau is a service based industry and is an industry that relies heavily on on outside operators retail shops casinos etc and uh, what that means is that data flows here uh, more than uh, than in most places really need to be able to, to be cross border which means that there are very few situations in which a transfer of personal data collected here in macau will not take place so this is the the overarching scheme and the overarching layout of the law and uh, and as we talk further i can delve uh, a bit further into some of these points okay perfect thank you very much that that's really interesting and i can immediately understand that it's a pretty complex patchwork and uh, and um, and there are strict rules to be to be respected and also pretty high risks uh, in case you don't comply with the regulation so um, i would like to as we as we usually do with um, with other members uh, we always try to to give to our listener a perspective to the m- most known uh, regulation on uh, on data privacy that is the gdpr so i would like to uh, ask you uh, a bit if you can provide us uh, the main similarities or differences that your regulation have uh, in comparison to to the gdpr in particular well uh, i think that the that uh, considering that we are a bit of an older version of past privacy laws uh, i think that the greatest singularity right now 
is that there is still relatively little treatment on the areas of protection of of of, cro of cross border data flows that I would single out as the as the the most particular specificity of our law. What this means is that while the GDPR is a bit more predictive and a bit and a bit more dispositional in terms of the provisions that it has, here we require a bit more of a text or the approach and a bit more of a case by case uh, approach. So it's challenging. And it's also challenging when we consider that we here in Macau also have to cater to the, the transnational effect of the G GDPR itself, which, uh, as you know, extends its reach even to jurisdictions where it does not apply, but where the data of data subjects who are regulated by the, or, or who are natives of jurisdictions where the, the, the GDPR applies are covered. So. That's another front that is now starting. It doesn't have still full effect and it's not still a full concern, but it's something that we also have to deal with, which is this tension between local regulations and also helping the, the compliance with GDPR uh, provisions because this is a heavily touristic town. There are more than 35 million tourists a year and there is a lot of data collection made of data subjects who hail from jurisdictions that are covered by the by the GDPR. Jose, thank you. That brings me to my next question that is somehow related to it. And are there any predictable changes or developments in relation to, to your regulation and also to what you just said that, uh, that we can discuss? There is no slated change, but uh, the, the, the conversation has been increasing at the legislative level about the need to revise the, uh, the local data privacy law precisely to align it more with international standards, meaning the GDPR, which is the gold standard of, of data privacy these days and is in full effect in, in, in Hong Kong, just, just next door. Uh, the, uh, the government has changed now. There is a heavy focus on, uh, on improving legislation that is related to new technologies, to new forms of business, to e-commerce, and all of this legislation is going to be, in my opinion, very difficult to, to be put effectively in play without, an, uh, at some point in time, an overhaul of the data privacy legislation. That being said, there is currently no specifically slated change, but I would be surprised if the law would not change over the next two to three years, let's say. So, before you mentioned the fact that you work a lot um, with your regulation on a case-by-case -case basis, let's say, so I think we can move on the practical part of this discussion. So I would like to, to ask you which are the main practical issues that you, you face during your everyday activities. The way we usually try to, to, to tackle the, these specificities is by working close in hand with the client in assessing first what sort of personal data is at play, what is the specific treatment and the purposes that are used for uh, the, that this data is used for? What are the target jurisdictions and how the transfer is processed? What conditions of security are implemented for this? And, uh, and that really helps us flesh out how we are going to approach the regulator in terms of the notification. There are certain specificities where we are still navigating a bit of a gray area, and I can give you a, a, a token but quintessential example, which is server location. There is no defined practice in Macau about uh, server location and, uh, and how it translates into the applicability of local data privacy laws or not. The current tack of the regulator has been that, uh, that where uh, the server is located in Macau, uh, I, uh, uh, for the most part, the data would have to be treated according to Macau law, which means notifications and the entire gamut of, um, of compliance with local provisions would have to be implemented here. For servers based outside of Macau, this does not have to be necessarily the case, but past opinions of the MDPO have gone towards the, uh, the sense that the, uh, the, the, the local data privacy law is geared essentially to protect the personal data of, per, of, uh, of, of Macau residents. And so even where the server is located outside, there is still the issue of whether or not this data is collected 
to the benefit of a company operating in Macau or relates for the most part with data related to Macau. As you can imagine, this is a bit of a gray area. So I would say that the biggest practical issue is there is always an element almost of due diligence involved when working with the client in making one of these notifications. That was re really interesting and I can see some uh, similarities with other um, frameworks but also some big differences from, uh, from them. Um, I would like to, to, to ask you, considering what we have just said in this very brief but interesting discussion, uh, why it's for, for you and, and for your firm important to be a part of, of an alliance as, uh, as privacy rules? As, as, as I began by, by mentioning, this, this, is a, this is a market and this is an area of law where the world is becoming increasingly larger but at the same time increasingly smaller in the sense that there is more and more that uh, data that has to flow from Macau and to Macau from virtually anywhere in the world. But at the same time, the connections are becoming ever more intricate and, uh, and it's becoming ever more difficult for a company to be able to generate a cohesive data, uh, data privacy policy outside of the environment of the GDPR. So to us, a membership in, in, a, in a specialist alliance such as Privacy Rules is particularly important. Why? First, it allows us uh, as practitioners to gather different perspectives and to gather different approaches on how to treat different versions of essentially the same problems. And at the same time, it also allows us from a market perspective to position ourselves in a way that we can service clients in a more global way. What this means is that Alliance members will now be in a better position to extend their reach into Macau in the sense that they can service the clients from, from the, the jurisdictions in which they are based in this particular jurisdiction. But we can also help clients with whom we, we work here extend their reach to other jurisdictions where they might need assistance. And this is an area that is growing in specificity and to us, it's a great comfort to be able to, to extend the service offer to our clients in this particular area uh, and to extend it to people who are devoted practitioners and work on these matters day after day. That's yeah, yeah. Definitely, you 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 raised the the main points that are behind the concept of, of privacy rules and the possibility and the opportunity for for experts to rely on other experts from from different countries. Since if we have just seen a, a, any country has a really specific and and different regulation from from others, so uh, any company that that would like to to move and uh, open businesses in in new countries uh, has to to know them very well and probably the best way to do that is always to have someone to which refer that is expert in that country and uh, on that uh, regulation. Um, just to conclude and speaking uh, in relation to this, um, I would uh, really like to, to ask you which is your advice for anyone that is interested to having or doing a business uh, in uh, the Macau jurisdiction? Well, I think that the, the soundest advice that I can give in terms of uh, in terms of personal data there would be a myriad other considerations to make when when a company or an individual wishes to operate here in in Macau but speaking to the to the particular point that that gathers us all in this uh, alliance what i would say is it's very important that the company is fully aware of what data it's treating what it wants to do with the data here in 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 Macau and really put together a specified policy and engage with professionals that can help them with compliance. We see here a growing trend in enforcement and we also see here a growing trend of, for example, disgruntled consumers using data privacy, which is a very much a hot topic, uh, using data privacy as a means to convey their dissatisfaction, even with products and services sometimes. It's not unusual for us to see complaints that are filed by customers who feel aggrieved in some way. And uh, almost their first go-to is they are using my data for something that they should not be using. The regulator is duty bound to investigate everything is duty bound to act on every complaint. And so it's really important that when this sort of 
consumer dispute happens, it's really important that the, that the operators in Macau have their, uh, uh, their systems in place, know exactly what they are doing, have their privacy policies and customer cards fully reviewed for compliance and have the notifications in place. Having the notification in place and up to date really goes a long way to showing the regulator that in all likelihood there is no breach. Zef, thank you very much for this overview on your firm, your activities and your country. It was all really interesting. And uh, we reached uh, the, the conclusion of, of this podcast. So I really want to thank you again for joining us today and to thank all our listeners. And I invite them to um, search for MDME lawyers in Macau and for you and your expertise if they have any need uh, in relation to, to data privacy in your country. And not only since as a member of this Alliance, you can provide a fully fledged service in also other countries and cooperate with uh, with other experts. So thank you again, and I hope to see you and uh, all our listeners very very soon again. Thank you very much. It's a, it's it's a great pleasure and an honor to join uh, to join Privacy Rules. Thank you.